Hi everyone and welcome to my horror narration page on YouTube. My name is Creepy Blonde Girl and I am really excited to be here. Um, this is going to be my first narration video so please be kind and let's get started. So relax, lean back, Kick your feet up, wrap up in a nice blanket, and let's get started. Story number one, The Lone Gas Station. Ignore the dramatic title. I'm not sure how to title it without being dramatic or giving away the let's not meet part. I live about 20 miles from the city in which I work. I live out in the country and about a short walking distance from my house is the highway, and on the corner is a 24-7 gas station. Last week, Saturday night, I went by there right before midnight to grab some Cajun peanuts. Delicious, by the way. I see one car parked on the side, which is normal, and usually just a guy working and rarely any customers at this time. Do you ever feel this dread overcome you like you know something is wrong? Well, I walk in and don't see anyone. Nobody behind the counter or in the store. So I take my time and assume they are in the bathroom or step to the back of the store. Surely they heard the chime on the door when I came in, right? I'm feeling weird and uncomfortable, so I wait a minute, even though it seemed like forever. And then I call out, Hello? Anyone here? Hello? Anyone here? I wait a minute more and put the peanuts down and walk out the door. I checked a car parked on the side, and there wasn't anything weird or troubling about it. I even glanced on the back side of the store and... There was nobody there. At this time, I'm pretty uncomfortable and kind of getting scared, so I just call the police. They show up 10 to 15 minutes later, but it really did feel like an hour. And they search the place. They find the cashier dead in the men's bathroom, beaten to death. They called for backup asked me to recap what I experienced, and then they sent me on my way home. <sighs> that ain't even the fucked up part. So I get home, and my dog is in the front yard, and he is pissing and just staring at me. He's an inside dog, by the way. And I notice my front door is cracked open. My heart is racing, so I grab my dog and head back to the gas station and let the police know. They send one of the guys to search my house. Nothing is stolen or out of place, but there was definitely sign of forced entry. So, this was last week, and about five hours ago, I get a call from my brother, who works for the county sheriff's office, and supposedly, supposedly, they pulled the camera footage, and about ten minutes before I walked into the store, another man walked in, and started punching on the cashier, and then he dragged him into the bathroom. On the footage, you can see me walk in and look around and then call out, and then you can see me walk out and check the car outside, walk to my vehicle and make the phone call to the police. About the time I'm in my vehicle, the alleged murderer, he walks out of the bathroom and sneaks out the back door, and before leaving the view of the camera, he takes off in the general direction of my house. Fortunately, my wife was out with some friends watching Beauty and a Beast again. But I'm convinced that I missed a murderer at the gas station and then he broke into my house. This week I had a new security system installed alongside a new front door, but I'm pretty sure that whoever did this is still out there. Edit. I can address some comments. I, I think it was a coincidence that he broke into my house and if he did actually break into it. It was late at night and there were no vehicles and since my house was within 200 yards, 
it was probably just an opportunity for him. Story 2. A dog walk that went horribly, terribly wrong. I'm a first-time poster here. I'm a 29-year-old female, and this incident occurred during the summer of 2016. I live in the suburbs, about 25 minutes outside of Baltimore, Maryland. I have a park that's about a mile walk from my house. My dog and I walk to the park and back almost every day. She is a year old and has a lot of energy, so these walks do us some good. We always go to the water fountain to get a drink before we go home. As we're getting a drink, I felt like somebody was watching me. And Let me state that I am that girl that wears earbuds when walking. My dog, I know, it's stupid and dumb. You don't have to tell me. I turn around and there's this tall man about 60 years old looking at me. He also has a large greyhound standing next to him. He waves to me and starts talking to me, so I do the polite thing and take my earbuds out and make small talk with him. He's asking me questions like, what is your dog's name? How old is she? Then he starts asking questions about me and myself and they're really, they're, they're personal. He asks me if I'm married and how old I was and where I live and what do I do for a living and I just did not feel comfortable answering these questions. As he's asking me these questions, my dog starts whining and pulling on her leash and she's a well-behaved dog and it really unsettled me because if she thinks this guy is creepy, then he must be a creep. So he sees that she's pulling on her leash and he asks can I give your dog a treat? I have some in my pocket, and it may calm her down. As we're standing there, I never saw him give his dog any treats, and I told him, um, she has a sensitive stomach, and I don't think it would be a good idea because she's on a special diet. I was not going to allow this man to give my dog a treat. I should also state that this park has a large walking path that goes through the woods. If you walk the full path, it's about two miles. The man then stated that he was going to go walk the path. He turned to me and said, Sarah, would you like to take a walk in the woods with me? When he said that, I about almost passed out because I was so afraid. I looked at him and I said, no, thank you. And I was just leaving. We said our goodbyes and I watched him walk down the path into the woods with his dog. As soon as he was out of my eyesight, I ran as fast as I could with my dog out of that park. Once I hit the park entrance, I started to slow down and I walked down the hill. The hill leads to a road that goes through a little community that I walk to to get home, and it takes about four minutes from the park to the street, so I walk down and get to the end, and I'm about to cross the street to go to my house, and right then I get that feeling again that somebody's watching me, and I turn around, and I'm about threw up, and passed out all at the same time because that creepy guy was in his car behind me. I was so scared. I knew that he couldn't have walked that entire path in four minutes. So he had to have pretended to walk down the path. And then when he hid behind the building, he must have waited for me to leave. And then he got in his car and followed me. I I didn't know what to do, and he was waving at me and smiling, and it was really sinister, and I was afraid, and and he then he he he, he rolled his window down, and I looked in his car, and I almost just screamed because there was no dog inside of it. He had no dog in his car. He looked at me and said, "I hope I see you again, Sarah." And then he drove off. I immediately ran home as fast as I could with Zoe at my side. I, uh, so, creepy.
creepy dog walker guy. Let's never, ever, ever meet again. Thank you guys for listening to my two Let's Not Meet narration stories. Um, If you have a story or a creepypasta that you would like me to narrate, I will put my email in the description um, box below and just send the stories to me. And that basically, by submitting those stories through email, you're giving me permission to narrate them on my YouTube. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and please subscribe and give me thumbs up. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening, day, afternoon, whatever time zone you're in, and have a lovely night, and uh, thank you. Bye.